Hello, Facebook friends. We have been getting ready for the installation tour launch. It's finally here on Friday at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Ticket sales will officially launch to the public for a fall winter installation tour. So with all of that excitement, I want to share with you some of the answers to the questions I've been getting over on Instagram. Uh, if you haven't seen this over there, I've been posting every day and asking about what questions you have when it comes to installations. And my gosh, there are plenty of questions. So I'm going to start and just answer a few today. Every day this week, I'm going to be here answering your in not Instagram. Gosh, I have Instagram answers all the time. Um, but I'm going to be answering your installation questions. All right, these are going to be really quick. If you have a question you want to answer, just put it in the comments. Let me know what it is you're looking for, what it is you're challenged with. Um, let me know what you want to know, and I'm happy to answer. All right, so I've got some props in my hand because I went ahead and looked at the questions ahead of time. Uh, first question is, uh, what cable slash string do you use to suspend your installs like the amazing tornado? Hey, Alexis. Okay, first, I love that you call this a tornado. I am sh quite sure that was the beautiful blue spiral that we made. I have gotten more requests for the blue spiral than anything else, so we will be making that again. If you are on tour with us, um, whether you're in Dallas or you're in Miami or you are in London or Los Angeles, one of those cities is going to be given the blue spiral. Uh, I discussed changing the name up and most people came back They really wanted to keep the blue, so we may just do the blue one again. All right, so what do I use to suspend those pieces? Guys, it's really simple. And when you come to these workshops with me, you are gonna see everything I teach is simple. These are easy, easy techniques. I love what I do, but I work really, really hard. And in order to do a lot of things, I have to find ways to do them easy. All right, you ready? This is my magic trick right here. This is 60 pound test fishing line that I actually do go into the fishing and hunting store and I buy my 60 pound test. Uh, sometimes I'll use 40, but I really like 60. Uh, 60 is a nice thickness. I don't know how well you can see this thickness here, but it is a nice thickness. It's got some nice security and it's got give. I was also asked why I don't use wire, why I opt to use fishing line instead of wire. Um, this was during the class, was not in one of the Instagram questions. And the reason I like fishing line as opposed to wire is because a lot of what I do is outside or it is attached to fixtures that I want to make sure we don't damage. And uh, I also want to make sure things don't break and come down on the bride and groom's head on wedding day. So with wire, wire hits that tension point and it snaps. It doesn't have as much flexibility. Fishing line is meant to have a little bit of give. It's meant for, you know, you go out and you go fishing and that fish is going to fight. And it's going to pull and it's going to relax and it's going to pull and relax. Well, that's what this fishing line does. So my little secret to hanging is fishing line. I probably use fishing line in installations as often as I use chicken wire. Uh, everyone knows chicken wires. That is, that is no secret there. All right. Uh, next question is, do you need to be an established florist in order to attend uh, one of the Intrigue workshops? No, you do not have to be an established florist. You've got to know the basic basics. Uh, we don't teach how to process flowers. We don't teach how to cut them and how to care for them. You've got to know that. You've got to know how to use your clipper. Uh, everything else, whether you are in the beginner or you're in the advanced, you are going to learn the techniques we use. Some of them you may know and some of them may just make your eyes roll back because they're so easy and you're gonna say why didn't i think of that that's one of my favorite things at a workshop is when the designers are like oh my gosh that's how you do it so fun all right next question and if you guys have questions feel free to ask me here i'm happy to answer questions impromptu and go off the list uh next question is do you use adhesive hooks to hang to the ceiling do I use adhesive hooks to hang to the ceiling? Um, I do not use adhesives to hang to ceilings. I do use command hooks to hang on walls. Uh, you have to get the really heavy, heavy duty command hooks. Uh, for the last workshop, I think it was the Toronto workshop, I got the step down 
in a slightly smaller command hook and I thought it'd be fine and it wasn't they didn't have as much hold so get the heavy duty ones they're like nine dollars a pop they are not cheap but they're really really helpful I was mortified to see that though my command hooks were not holding but I know it's because I bought the five dollar ones and not the nine dollar ones buy the expensive command hooks you will not regret it you will regret buying the cheap ones uh sorry Joseph I think I saw a question here um, oh, great seeing you too. Thank you for helping me be my model during the, uh, the, uh, sketchbook series. That was fun. All right. So, a next question is, what is your favorite flower for installations? All right. So my favorite flower for installations is actually not a flower at all. My favorite flower for installations is Plumosa. I've been using Plumosa for all kinds of things. And then my second favorite, I've actually got it right here. I really like eucalyptus and I'm loving the tinted and painted eucalyptus right now. All right, forgive me. I'm gonna hop away for a second. I totally just dropped my list. All right, I'm back. <laughs> All right, so um, eucalyptus painted and the plumosa painted. Those are my two absolute, absolute favorite. Hey guys, Sarah. All right. Uh, next question. How do you start a structure for an installation? All right. How do I start a structure? It depends on what I'm going to be creating. So if I'm going to be creating a cascade from the ceiling, then I'm going to start my structure by attaching to the ceiling. Now I look for existing hang points. I look at structural points and if I don't have those, I will drill in and screw in to the, uh, uh to the cross beams that are in the building with the permission of my venue. At no time do I ever take any power tools to the walls or the structure of the venue without permission. Now, how do you get permission to do that? First, you better have freaking great insurance, really, really good insurance. And even beyond having really good insurance, you need to make sure they're aware what you're gonna be doing, what the damage is going to be, and discuss upfront what the cost is going to be for you to do that. It is going to cost you less to discuss this upfront than it is going to make a mistake and have to pay the venue to repair a historic wall. Um, only speaking from experience, of course. All right, uh, so how do I start a structure? I start a structure if it's gonna be suspended from the top and then work my way down. I don't always use chicken wire. Sometimes I'll use a plastic grid or I'll use oasis cages. It really depends on what the structures I'm creating. So um, if the individual that asked me that question, if you could ask me again, I will, when I come back and do the live tomorrow, I can give you a better answer. I just know what it is you want to create. Do you want to do an installation on a staircase? Do you want to do a wall installation? Do you want to do a ground installation? I, I really just need to know what type of install you want to create. Uh, all right. Next question, do you paint your florals or do you order them? That's, that's what some of my props are for. Um, and this actually came from Amanda, I think it's Southern Weddings by Amanda. Um, so everyone sees I've been using a lot of these. These are actually from A Floral. If you are in Canada, you cannot currently get these from A Floral, but you can get them from some other places. So this is just a dried painted palm. And I do not paint any of my items. I order all of the items directly from my supplier. A Flora is one of my favorites for dries and, and silks. Uh, and if I'm ordering fresh, of course, I still make sure I get them painted. You know, over in Holland and Ecuador, and I believe even in Florida now, they're doing some painting. In fact, these here, I don't know if you guys can see the. Oh, you can. Oh, well, he'll go there. Um, these guys here, this I believe was foxtail, and it is painted foxtail. It's this nice pink tone. Uh, all right. Next question. Do you make your own props? No, I do not make my own props. I do subcontract my props when I need a, a backboard built or I need a giant elephant or whatever it may be. I have my props built and I add flowers onto what's being built. Oh, I love this question. All right, I have two more questions to go. Next question is, what is the biggest and best you have done? The biggest and best installation I have created. Oh, I love so many of the designs we've created. All right, so the biggest I ever did was a 16 foot tall floral wall. That wasn't my favorite though. That was just powerful and big. 
My favorite we've ever done. I bet, I bet someone could guess if you're listening to this. My favorite design I've ever done was at the Greenbrier. It was Brian and Mark's wedding. It was in, I believe, the West Pavilion. I can't remember what room it was in, but it was a grand piano, the most beautiful grand piano I'd ever seen. This piano had been played by celebrities and presidents dating back to 18-something. I can't remember. I think it was 1861. Yes, the piano, the piano. We covered a grand piano with flowers, and it was just beautiful. We've since done a couple of pianos, and they were all spectacular, but that very first one, that right there was my favorite installation of all times. Um, when it comes to budget, it may have also been one of the higher budgeted uh, designs for installations because this client did not go cheap on the type of product he wanted to use. He wanted to use orchids. He wanted to use, uh, what, oh gosh, what was it? I'm blanking. Oh my gosh, the flowers were amazing and beautiful. Uh, I will post a link to the images and to the video so you can see it. But we used really high-end product, which made it look that much, that much better. Um, all right, my final question. And again, I'm going to be back every day this week answering your installation questions. And my gosh, I decided to do this outside today. And it is really, really warm here in Maryland. I probably will be coming to you from the air conditioning for the rest of the week. All right, so how much do you charge per foot for installations? All right, so I charge about the same thing for all of the work I do. Everyone does price a little bit differently, but I like to charge consistently across the board. So I use a three times markup. So whatever the cost of the product is times three. And then of course I'm gonna add my labor and those elements in. So the per square foot is going to change based on the product. So if you're trying to figure out how to price your design, you need to come up with your recipe first. The recipe really is the first thing before you do anything else. You cannot price without a proper recipe. If you try to price without a recipe, you are going to be sad because you are going to lose money. Recipes are, are what keeps you in business. Um, I know a lot of people out there, I need to put these down somewhere. I know a lot of people out there, they like to just go to the market and pick flowers and make it work. Uh, well, that does not work for me uh, because of the scale that I design on. First of all, flower market is not gonna have enough of quantities and what I'm gonna need. And if I go to the flower market to pick flowers, I am so over budget every single time because I wanna buy all of the flowers, literally all of the flowers. I may not even need this flower this week, but I see it and somehow I'm going home with these expensive red charm peony because I just had to. So I make sure I order what I need, I price what I need, and I price it accordingly using that three times markup. All right, um, there was a question here. Oh, you know, I think this is on tomorrow's, but I'm gonna answer it today anyway. This is on tomorrow's list. So. Uh, I was asked, how do I suspend tulips from the ceiling? And I don't have any tulips with me this week, so let's use this. Let's pretend, I don't know if I can pretend this is dried. Yeah, there's no chance I can pretend this. Um, all right, this is not gonna work, but I'm gonna try to show you what I'm doing. So for tulips, I take my wire. This is a 21 gauge wire. I use a 21 or a 22. I cut a length about two and a half inches long of this wire. This is your 18 inch 21 or 22 gauge wire. I make a very simple little bend, very, very simple little bend. And I pop one end into my tulip. Like I said, no chance I can pretend on this one because it's, it's dried. And it hooks just like this. And then this tulip, pretending it's a tulip, would hook onto our ceiling so it will suspend down. Uh, that's all right. I'm only sharing that with you here because that's one of my favorite secrets during the installation tour. All of these fun little things are very, very easy, very basic, and it's really fun to bring these installations to everybody. We also talk about how to do it budget savvy, how to be, how to be economical with your time and your investment, so that you can get these large scale pieces done. What I did find as I grew my business in the floral industry is a lot of us work way too hard to get 
a project done when it comes to event work. So if you've been learning in the retail world or learning for tr a traditional florist, they're not necessarily in the retail world or in the wedding world. So they don't understand the designs, these installations only needing to last for anywhere from four to 12 hours at the most. Uh, so that's something I really, really focus on is making sure we are designing for minimal effort, maximum exposure and maximum profit. All right, so the tickets go on sale officially on Friday at 1 p.m. However, those of you on the pre-registration list, you will have access on Thursday at one o'clock. We did have a glitch with our pre-registration um, or our early access. We tried to do this fancy like rolling early access, which failed miserably. Those of you that are on the list, you know that did not work according to our plan. I apologize. Um, so at this point, every one of the pre-registration lists, no matter when you signed up, you are going to have access on Thursday at 1 PM. That is 24 hours before everyone else has access. If you have not signed up, um, for the pre-registration pre list and you want early access, there is a link right here in this live. You can go to that link and you can get your access there. You will get a series of emails that's going to open up and give you your code for early access. In addition to having the early access to the seat, you also get an early access price, which is really freaking awesome. Guys, I say freaking a lot. I don't know if that's just my age or whatnot. All right. So I'm going to get back to work and I've got to get out of this heat. If you all have any more questions, please pop over to Instagram, ask the question in your stories or in my stories, and I will be happy to answer. I've got about another 40 questions on my list already, and I'm sure by tomorrow we'll have even more. So keep asking and I'm going to keep answering. Bye guys.